What's going on guys? Welcome back to the TCG Empire YouTube channel. Today we're taking a look at Turbo Iron Hands EX. So if you guys don't know, Iron Hands EX is a card that was released in Paradox Rift. And since it's been released, it's been a nice tech cards in decks like Chiam Pao. Um, some Lugia decks played it with basic energy, but this deck revolves around actually being able to synergize with Iron Hands greatly. So Iron Hands EX 230 HP, it's a future Pokemon. Arm press, 160 damage, and then you have that very special Ampy very much, 120 damage. And if you knock out your opponent's active Pokemon with this attack, you take one more prize card. So this means that one prizers become two prizers, two prizers become three prizers, um, three prizers become four prizers in the span of if we were using it when VMAXs were legal. But most of the time, Iron Hands is taking two prizes to three prizes, depending on what it's going up against, but it does have 230 HP, which kind of is an awkward number for some decks to hit. But being paired with that, because 120 damage is kind of low, we have Iron Crown EX, 220 HP. You have Cobalt Command. Attacks used by your future Pokemon, except any Iron Crown EX, do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So if you have three of these out, that's doing an extra 60 damage on top of the 120, or iron hands which means you're hitting 180 and it's just great for what this deck wants to accomplish and then for a psychic and two colorless you have uh twin shottles this attack does 50 damage to two of your opponent's pokemon um it's not affected by weakness resistance or any other effects on those pokemon so iron crown definitely solid for what the deck wants to do we're playing one mew ex just because your hand size does get low with this deck and because you're taking prizes so quick, Iono can be more effective for your opponent to use. So you can restart to get yourself out of some low hand sizes. And then finally, to synergize with the deck in order to set up your Iron Hands, aside from cards we'll talk about later, you have Maridon with Peak Acceleration. Peak Acceleration says you search your deck for up to two basic energy cards and attach them to your future Pokemon in any way you like. And then you shuffle your deck and you do 40 base damage. Now Maridon is a future Pokemon, so it does get buffed by those iron crowns meaning if you have three iron crowns out you're dealing 100 damage for a single energy and accelerating two energy which is huge <clears throat> some of the cards we have to generate energy onto the board is electric generator this is great at helping to set up iron hands and you can even potentially set it up turn one and start getting going as you'll see in one of the gameplays we were able to do that thank you thanks to electric generator um it's been a staple in decks that run iron hands or really any decks but Electric Generator is fantastic. And we're also playing four Techno Radar. You discard a card from your hand, search your deck for any two future Pokemon, reveal them, put them into your hand, shuffle your deck. This just helps to synergize the board better. And we are playing four Future Booster Energy Capsule. So what this card does is not only does it give future Pokemon free retreat, it also gives them an extra 20 damage. So now if you have four Iron Crowns out and a Future Booster Energy Capsule on a Iron Hands, you're dealing an extra 100 damage, meaning that easily 120 is now dealing 220, which can one-shot things like GM Pow, Rotom, and really anything else in the format that's not a Stage 2 EX. So, really solid card. And then the other tool we're playing is Heavy Baton. If the Pokemon this card is attached to has a retreat cost of exactly 4, and it's in the active spot, and it is KO'd by damage from your opponent's Pokemon, Move up to three basic energy cards from that Pokemon to your bench Pokemon in any way you like. So if your Iron Hands is knocked out, you get to move three energy, providing that there's nothing that's preventing Iron Hands from having exactly four. Now, if your opponent plays something down like a Beach Court or plays something down to increase your retreat cost, sadly, Heavy Baton is turned off. But providing that nothing changes, Heavy Baton lets you move energy around and it is fantastic. Now, the neat little tech in here. We are playing the 5th place list from EUIC, and this list did play Erica's Innovation. This is great, as it allows you to reveal your opponent's hand, and you put a basic Pokemon you find there onto the bench. And if you put that Pokemon onto the bench in this way, you switch it to the active. So this means if your opponent is holding a Pokemon that you can take easy prizes on, you can maneuver it and put it to the active, take the easy prizes on it. So this includes things like low HP basic Pokemon at the end game. If they play Luminion and hold it in their hand because they don't want you to take three prizes, you can easily do that. So Erica's Innovation is definitely good in the deck. And then we are also playing Prime Catcher as the A spec in order to synergize the most. So as always, the deck list will be posted 
in the description and it will also be right here so that way you guys can see the full clean deck list and don't forget that if you guys want to try this deck on ptcg live the deck list as i said is in the description all you have to do is copy and paste it and import it into pokemon trading card game live try it for yourself and have fun but i do want to say thank you guys for everything you guys have been really helping me to enjoy uploads and playing pokemon again and the format has been fun i love all the feedbacks all the question um i just love everything that you guys have been doing for me as a community and i'm really happy to see the channel grow and to get to know some of you so again thank you for everything if you guys do enjoy today's video though do me a favor smash the like button subscribe turn on post notifications let me know down in the comments what you think of iron hands or future box as people also call it but that being said there's three gameplays today, so enjoy them, and I'll catch you guys in Monday's video. Later. Alrighty guys, so let's get into the first game with Iron Hands. Hopefully we have a good start. Now looking at this, don't actually hate it. We have access to Arvin, we have Future Booster Capsule, so we have some ways to get some Pokemon out. We can go from there, depending on what my opponent starts, we can get a Donk going. So it looks like we're playing against Goldango. So definitely could be a good matchup for us as we can take those early prizes as fast as possible. And we actually start Techno Radar plus Double Generator. So we might even be able to pull off a hands here. And if we can, that would be huge. If not, then we do have the ability to set up Maridon. But I'm for sure going to play the Electric Generators first before I commit this energy. And then we'll go from there. So see what my opponent does here. Right now, just an attach. There is the mana fee. So, depending on what my opponent does, uh, we'll prime catcher up, give me ghoul if they end up retreating. Just so that way we can take the quick prize with the Maridon if we don't hit it. And my opponent actually leaves give me ghoul in the active. So, that's fine. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go... Um... My setup is actually kind of fine right now. I don't need to really Arvin for much. So we're going to get rid of one energy at least. We're going to grab Iron Hands and Maridon. We're going to go Crown, Hands, Maridon, Generator. So if we hit two off this Generator, we can attack. And we hit one, which is fine. It's not horrible. Um, technically, I could Arvin for another Generator and risk it and i don't actually hate doing that because it saves my energy attachment so we'll go for that and then we can go um we'll grab the heavy baton just so that way we have access to it and then we'll go generator we do hit one more energy which is huge so starting two generators was perfectly in what we wanted to do so now we can go for the retreat Attach the, uh, we'll hold the heavy baton, but if my opponent, I don't know, I kind of want it there, so. The only reason I wouldn't attach it would be if my opponent did something like use vacuum, but right now we're in a good spot. Now my opponent can't play a supporter, but we have an iron hand set up, and we have two prize cards that we get to take, so. And we also have prime catcher, depending on what my opponent puts into play, we can prime catcher into a free retreat pivot with the iron crown, so. Saving the energy attachment. My opponent concedes so um these are probably gonna be fairly quick games so that was the first game let's hop into a second game and hopefully have the same type of consistency Alrighty, guys so this is game number two with iron hands um we had a really strong game last game so let's see if we can get the same thing going um if we can top deck something like an ultra ball or not ultra ball sorry a nuzz ball or a techno radar or even arvin that would be huge um but we're playing against lost box we should inherently have a good matchup against Lost Box just because we can take two prizes on Comfe. So I don't fully hate it. Um, again, it's just going to come down to what we top deck. Otherwise, we're just going to have to play I don't know and go from there. So my opponent's playing Moon, Lost Moon. So we can actually Arvin, Artisan and get a Maridon out, which is huge. So that means that we will have a Pokemon that we can actually get into play and start attacking with providing that we don't top deck something to get an iron hand set up but let's see 
I would need iron hands, generator to hit two, attach, and have another generator, plus a way to retreat. Um, and I'm not sure how possible that is. We're going to have to figure that out. But my opponent is going to take a little bit of time to build their lost zone up. Now, if they do cycle a third Comfe, they technically could next turn with a Colrus plus two Comfe. So, um, we'll see what they can do, but they are going to have one less Comfe to use next turn. So, if they can only get one out, they'll be in a rough spot. They do have access to Artisan, but just a pass from my opponent. So, let's see what the top deck is. So, we get a Psychic Energy. Not really going to do us too much. So, we'll just go for the Artisan. We'll go into the Maridon. And then we'll go the attach prime catcher just so we can put this Maraid on in the active. And then we can go Iono. We do have the psychics in case we need to attack with crown. So getting our hands to draw. So this is not looking terrible at all. So we have crown, we have hands. So we can go baton, future booster just so we can retreat pivot out of it. Go Mew, generator. We hit two, which is great. Um, and if we can actually hit another generator off this Mew, we might be able to attack with hands. We'll see. So we don't, unfortunately, but, um, honestly, I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to nest ball right now, though, for this hands, just because if my opponent ends up getting off a gouging next turn, they can technically knock out iron hands and then the baton will activate putting the energy onto this hands. So... I am perfectly okay with that. So we'll go peak acceleration, hitting 100 damage, and then we can search for some basic energy. I'm going to grab one psychic just so that way I still have lightnings left in the deck for generators because Iron Hands does take colorless, so we can actually amplify uh, the usage of these psychics. So see what my opponent does here. We do have boss's orders as well, depending on what my opponent puts down, but... Right now we're hitting 120, 140, 160, so anything with 160 HP we can KO. Otherwise, my opponent is not going to have a real good time. And with Baton, um, because we have exactly four, we're going to be able to move the energy around, which means that we can just leave this hands in the active, let it take knockouts and go from there. And the neat thing is that if we set up the hands to take a knockout for two prizes next turn and my opponent actually uses frenzy gouging then they'll leave themselves with enough hp to where iron hands can just take a ko and we take our last three prizes so there's not really much that my opponent can do um might be playing the sables art version but considering the fact that they're playing lightning energy and water i completely doubt it but we'll see what they do so they have four in the lost zone right now just choosing a new active so they go into cramorant not bad by any means. There's the spit innocently for 110. Technically, I could boss one of the Comfes, which wouldn't be bad just because it forces my opponent to pivot one more. Um, and we do have access to Erica's as well. Um, I don't fully hate the Erica's. It gives me hand knowledge at my opponent's hand. Um, so we're going to go for it. So my opponent has um, not too much to work with. They do have access to Roxanne, so Roxanne could hurt a little bit, but I'm fine with that. Uh, we can just go Artisan. Artisan will allow us to grab another Maridon. So they're probably going to be playing Roxanne next turn. And we have Mew, so I'm not too worried about that. We're going to get two free prizes. There's not too much my opponent can really do that would really hurt us unless they took a knockout and also was able to get rid of the baton but then in turn they wouldn't be building their lost zone so if they end up owning to Sableye or anything like that they wouldn't be able to do so and if my opponent ends up not playing Roxanne this game or this turn um there's not very much that they're going to be able to do with another hands being here, so. We have access to boss, which means that we can boss around and KO things as well, so. Definitely in the controlling part of this game.
Technically, I could have bossed the Greninja to avoid my opponent drawing so many cards, but they're already down four energy. And I think they super added one in. No, they just played switch cards. So there is the Roaring Moon. Um, I'm not too worried about it, just because we're at a point now where if my opponent ends up using Frenzy Gouging, we can just take a knockout with Maridon. And we're going to take two prizes, which means then we can power up hand. And then regardless of what my opponent brings up, we just boss something up and take one prize. So honestly, not too worried about this. My opponent just thinning their deck. So that way Roxanne is more effective. They were at six in the loss zone, so no seven yet. And they can't play Colrus this turn, so they would have to cycle another Comfey. So it'd have to be this one. And they'd have to have a way to retreat. So they might hit it off of Roxanne, but not too stressed. Just because asking for a switching out to use this Comfey, plus the Roxanne, plus Mirage Gate, plus Vacuum, um, is a lot. But even if they high roll and hit that, again, Maridon just takes the knockout and then we go from there. So I am not overly stressed. And that's worst case scenario, right? If my opponent ends up taking a knockout... But Heavy Baton is still alive, then we just Iron Hands for game. There's a switch. And my opponent actually discarded the... Ulrus, so they are probably prone to playing Roxanne this turn, which I'm completely okay with. Oh, interesting. So there is a Culrus. So we could technically um Technically I could boss this moon if I wanted to and hit it just so my opponent can't get Sableye down. But Sableye is not really gonna do anything to me either. I think I'm free to just take two prizes and play the research. Um, we can attach to this Maride on here just so that way we're doing enough because my opponent technically can hit 110 and then use Calamity Storm. Um, but interesting. So my opponent just goes for that play. Interesting. Okay. So we're going to go hands. Either way, I'm going to be handsing this turn. It's just a matter of how I want to do it. So we can Artisan. Let's check the deck. So we have no recovery options, but I'm not really worried about that. Um, and we still have access to 7 energy as well. So even if my opponent ends up taking a knockout here... Actually, no, my opponent can't... Yeah, my opponent won't be able to take a knockout um, at this point now. So we're just going to go research, see what we hit. So we hit double generator plus booster, which is good. So we can go generator, hit one. And as long as we hit a generator off of here, we'll be good. So there's two. So now um, we're in a super solid spot. So we can go future booster and then we can go baton. Um, there's not too much that my opponent can do now because I'm going to take two prizes. They can't knock out Moon without damaging themselves and then Hands just comes up and takes the knockout. So let's go Ampy very much. Take two. The only way that my opponent can do anything is if they counter catch or stall this crown. But we do still have two capsules in the deck so we do have a way to retreat. There's a Dark Energy, there's a Super Rod, so the Mirage Gate's coming. Technically, I didn't misplay, but I kind of did just because my opponent ends up coming up and just using Calamity Storm. Technically, I can't one-shot the moon 
I would have to find a way to get another crown out plus my own vacuum plus another way to um, attach a tool. But considering the fact that we can empty our hands out now, we should be fine. My opponent getting rid of vacuum, interestingly enough. Oh wait, hold on, let me see something really quick. Okay, so there's the Calamity Storm, so that's what I was thinking. There's the 220. So we're not knocked out, and we do have vacuum, so that's huge. Um... 160, 70, 180, 190, 200, 160, 180, 200, 220, 240. So I need to hit a way to get the other crown out plus a future booster capsule. So yeah, I'm fine with that. So we'll go vacuum, get rid of the energy, get rid of the baton because it's not really relevant right now. And then we can go switch, go into Mew, restart, draw three, hopefully hit a supporter. We hit a supporter, um, and that actually should be game. Let's see, Arvin. Arvin can grab us the capsule. And, okay, so we don't have the other crown in the deck. Um, but I'm not actually too worried about that. We do still have boss in the deck, so we still can set up a potential knockout. Um, we'll just have to play around it a little bit. 60, 180, 200, so. Yeah, that's fine. So this is, I misplayed by not having the psychic. Um, let's see, we're going to attach here, um, I don't think it's going to really matter, technically future booster capsule, um, helps me take a knockout if I need to, so this is what we're going to do, we're going to retreat, I'm trying to think of which one I want to promote. I should have discarded the um, tool off of this hands instead of this one. Just because then if this one got knocked out, I wasn't in, I don't want to say a losing spot, but I wasn't in a bad spot. But that's fine because we can just go arm press right now and my opponent has to Calamity Storm. If they want to do anything, they can technically boss, but there's not much that they're really going to do. Um... We're too far ahead right now. And no matter what my opponent brings up, it gets knocked out by hands. So, I don't know why I overthink that last turn too much. If I didn't have the, the knockout with Iron Crown and stuff, then um, there's not really much that my opponent can do here. Just because I do have two hands set up. So... Definitely a little bit overthinking for me that could have made it super awkward, but my opponent's pretty checkmated right now. There's another hand set up. They take a knockout here. Um, they KO themselves, so I don't even have to attack. They only hit 100, and there's not much that they can do. So my opponent just passing, so then we can just go here, go amp, 160, take the final prize card. And then that's pretty much it. So my opponent conceded. So that was game number two for the first time in a long time. Let's hop into a game three just because the first game was fast. Second game was a little bit slower, but I just want to showcase the style of what hands can do when it's turboed. And uh, yeah, so that was game two. Let's hop into game three. Alrighty, guys. So into game number three for the first time in a while. 
We're gonna see what we can do. We both mulligan. So I'll be able to see what my opponent's playing. So uh, my opponent is playing grass, earthen vessel. Um, they could be playing Torterra. So see what exactly is going on. But right now this hand, uh, it's not looking too bad. Oh, okay, so my opponent is playing the vanilla, the vanilla CX, I think it is. No, um, I'm not sure what they're playing. I guess we'll find out. My opponent is in Mewtwo tier, grinding this deck, so we'll see exactly what we're up against, but for right now, at least we do have access to Peak Acceleration. That is a fun card for hands to be able to KO. Um, so it's probably going to be, I don't want to say a quick game, but with the way the prizes are lined out and my opponent having to take time to evolve, um, we definitely could be okay. So there's the instant charge. So we'll see what my opponent is playing. Uh, there's another lightning. I don't like that, but kind of have to. And then we're going to discard these future boosters anyway, so might as well just put them on the Maridons. And we can draw. So we have access to crown. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to nest ball right now and get out the hands. Just because then next turn I can attach Arvin, hopefully Generator, and take a knockout. But then I don't have to Techno Radar right now. We'll go here. Grab two. Um, technically, it's better for me to grab both Lightnings just to potentially hit off of Generator. Because I do have the Lightning in hand so I can attach, leave more in hand for Generator. And then, depending on what we get next turn, we actually might be able to take three prizes and just go to two after KOing a Rotom. Um, but we're going to have to ask for a lot. I would have to top deck either Counter Catcher or um, anything else. Okay, so my opponent is playing Serena. And this one is a little bit annoying just because it does put us down to 30. But I'm not like super worried. It just is a little bit uh, annoying to deal with. But thankfully it only puts us down until we have 30. So it can't, it can't knock out something after. That rufflet is going to be annoying. So we actually might need to take that out. There's the Icicle Spear. So I think what I'm going to do now is KO this Rufflet. And I just keep drawing all of my energy. That's insane. So we're going to go here. We're going to go Techno Radar and discard one more energy. And we'll grab hands and crown. Just because with having the extra crown on board does allow for us to 20, 140, 160, 180. We won't be able to KO the Rotom, but we can still hit a lot of damage. But we also do have access to arm press if we need to. So we'll heavy baton and then we'll go Arvin. Arvin can grab us our prime catcher. And we'll grab the future booster capsule just so that way we have it in case we need it. We'll go Prime Catcher, bring up the Rufflet, bring up Maridon. We can free retreat, go for the peak acceleration, KO this Rufflet because Braviary is an annoying card. And then we can go one and one, and the one energy we have here we can attach. So. A little bit scary just because Serena does have a lot of HP, so we might have to try and two shot it. There's a grass. There's an Iono. Um Iono is a little bit annoying, but it's not detrimental. So we get counter catcher. Uh I don't think we're ever gonna really be able to use that. Temple of Sinnoh, that's not going to do anything to us, really. 
There's a Poffin. Industrious Incisors. If my opponent doesn't bench a Braviary, I'm okay with just attacking into this Serena. So my opponent just does 30, does the damage here. So <clears throat> my opponent probably plays something along the lines of a way to heal Serena. So what I might need to do is if I attach boss retreat KO the barrel I take two prizes and then that just means that I need to find another boss and then I can take a knockout on Rotom so I don't hate that so we'll go boss bring up the barrel attach generator see what's left in the deck that's fine and then we can go retreat we can amp for 160 Take a knockout, and then if this hands gets knocked out, we can move the energy around, which means that we can potentially set up some knockouts later. And we also have access to Erika's, which is great, because if my opponent has a Pokemon in their hand, we can actually just Iron Hands it and take a knockout. So the Erika's innovation definitely clutch. Um, we'll see what my opponent is going to do here, though. The Rare Candy Serena. Stealthy Hood, bit of a pain, but we do have access to attacking with Maridon if necessary, so um, not horrible. Just means that we're going to have to play some uh, map games. We do also have access to using Switch Cart, I believe. Yeah, Switch Cart should still be in the deck, so. There's the Icicle Soar. So the only thing we can do is see what's in my opponent's hand. Hopefully he, they have a Pokemon that we can take a knockout on. So there's 80 damage on the Maridon. So a bit annoying, but definitely not terrible. Erika's, and we found the Bounce Sweep, which means that we can use it, bring it to the active, and then we have access to Ampy very much for the last two prizes. So... Some fairly quick games fairly consistent games um the deck did what we wanted it to able to fully set up and kind of get everything going um i think future box is a very good deck it's a very fun deck uh, if you brick sometimes there's no coming back so you just have to hope that you hit those consistency cards early on but that's pretty much it so if you guys did enjoy today's video do me a favor smash the like button subscribe turn on post notifications let me know down in the comments what you think of Future Box as a deck. Do you enjoy playing it? Do you not like playing against it? I don't think anyone enjoys getting Iron Hands for two prizes or three or four if you were in a VMAX format, but that's beside the point. But again, thank you guys for everything, and I'll catch you in Monday's video. Later.